Hello, friends. Host Eric here. Talking with fans, people, and I'm here with Mark Guest, Tay Cooks, uh, Kestrel, and the Bot. And I would like to pose the following question: What are the ethical concerns or ethical considerations for the principle of slapping some sense into somebody? Now, we probably all remember some old movie or cartoon in which there's a hysterical lady. And the guy goes, what? And she goes, ah, thanks, I needed that. And she's suddenly sane again, right? Now, I'm not advocating that anybody actually physically slap any sense in anybody. I think that is not morally acceptable. I don't even think it's an interesting moral question because, um, well, I mean, it might be if you're really acting hysterical. But even then, I think, ooh, let's see, what can we do? Physical violence is lacking imagination. However, I am guilty of metaphorically slapping some sense into people often enough, or at least attempting to. And I've encountered a few people lately that have been very stubborn and or non-optimal in their expression of self in a way that makes me want to go, okay, the problem here is you need to be humbled. Like, you need to, to check yourself before you wreck yourself. You need to get some sense slapped into you. Somebody needs to go, no, sit down, shut up, listen, stop defending your precious wrongnesses so hard, and you know, wake up, you know? But the reality is, it usually doesn't result in them going, thanks, I needed that. So, Mark, do you have any thoughts on this idea of slapping some sense into somebody? In terms of when it's permitted and when it's not permitted? Well, is it ever... Is it ever the right choice to be like, I'm just going to school the fuck out of you because you need to learn that something or whatever? Yeah, I would say certainly if they're imposing it upon another group of people or another person um, or they're in a position of some recognized authority. Like, I, I definitely don't like it when, for instance, my professors are... Uh, at the podium, so to speak, and and speaking wrongness and defending wrongness and, and convincing these. I mean, it, it, it's all and in some in some way, it's all, it's also up to the student to discern and parse out what they're saying. But it's also the duty of each individual in that class that understands the wrongness to speak up about it. So that would be an instance where I would say, you know, you ought to. You have to say something and school them. Okay, but a classroom is like a discursive environment that is supposed to be um, engaging in that fashion. Uh, however, people come in here, and I guess this environment is supposed to be engaging in that fashion too, but my, my thought is, like, okay, well, take Brittany, for example. I've been talking with her with Kim a lot, and you know, she's obviously functioning in a very non-optimal capacity. Some people would say that she has some mental health issues. But what what my take on it is that I think that she's she's got some habitual lack of disinterested calculus. Of course, her tool function is FI, and her dominant function is SE, so she's not really going to... She's polar TI, and it's not going to come naturally to her at all that due to such to calculus. But it seems to me that that basically what's lacking in a person who's hyper-projecting, hyper-defensive, hyper... hyper-desirous um, hyper of controlling things, like needing to have people understand that her and the way that she wants to be understood rather than the way that people understand her. It, you know, the six slot FE with the polar TE and there's just a total lack of objectivity. But it's hard for me to believe that some people are fundamentally broken, that they can't become objective enough to improve their lives. And yet I also am aware that this is some kind of uh, function bias I'm expressing here as well. Obviously, I'm biased to TI and any and other objective functions. And yet, I see that lack of objectivity is 
correlating so strongly with a an irresponsibility towards one's moral agency that um, it seems totally appropriate to condemn it. So I get a little stuck here because I don't want to be condemning people's identities or ontologies just because they're different than me. And I don't want to be thinking that certain function stack differences correlate so strongly with wickedness that we ought to condemn a whole type of person as just, you know, not of value in some regard. So, I don't know. What do you think about when people come in who are, who are exceedingly stubborn, who are burdening the group with difficultness in some capacity, and yet are resistant or refusing of any criticism. What's what ought one do in that context? Well, I mean, I, I would say that if you did use your TI stick and beat him up with it, you wouldn't be wicked for doing so. It's not like, like you couldn't be deemed evil or, or, or you know an evil doer for doing doing that sort of thing. But perhaps a better way of going about it would be to ask more questions and have them work through the the chain themselves. I, I mean, sometimes I find that to be difficult, uh, especially when they're not answering the questions right. honestly. And so I think that is perhaps where the uh, frustration comes in as well. Um, so, yeah. I guess in this instance, in this conversation, I'm sort of taking up the position that uh, Wash was arguing with me the other day about, which is that, uh, you know, I could be more effective in my, in my argumentation if my goal were to convince somebody and, or have them perceive me as likable, I guess, too, is another way that it could be more effectively done. But, you know, the, I, I argued against that at the time. I thought about it more, and, uh, I still find it like when I think about taking that approach, I just end up going like, yeah, but there's always going to be too much I don't know. Like I don't know enough to to to. And I'm not good enough with FE to read them that well to move them along with FE for for a very long time. Until I just go, okay, you need to just stop. <laughs> it's it's distracting, like the FE thing. It, it takes a lot of time and conscious effort, at least more so, to think about those sorts of things. Because then you have to be thinking about how they're responding and what you're going to say next to how what they're talking about now. And, and if you should comment uh, uh, on the thing, like, oh, I, I really like how you, you did this. Uh, like, you, like, you should I give compliments as well? Or, or I think it's admirable that you know you said this but have you thought it da, da, da. it's just a whole bunch of i don't want to call it nonsense but well, i don't think it blocks out to you i i think it just says it's like um it's like running a browser with a really bulky extension or something or running yeah 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 it, it seems like for the other person perhaps they would have to sift through more sand to get to the, the nugget that they that they need. Like it's going to be a TI truth or or TI uh, sort of thing that you're throwing at them, but then they have to sift through all this other B garbage, not garbage stuff that's around it, uh, which doesn't hinder the TI, but it does bury it perhaps within whatever you're saying. Sand nuggets. If there's one thing I love, it's licking sand nuggets. <laughs> sand nugget hunt. <laughs> sand nugget hunt is a good idea for another business. It's just it's a building and behind it is a big sand area. And basically there's dirt claws underneath the sand. And, you know, kids pay to, to go dig up sand nuggets. 
No throwing in the sand there is allowed. Five dollar fine for every sand nugget you throw. Okay, that'll be four four dollars, please, plus seventy five dollars in fines. <laughs> oh, Johnny, I told you not to throw the sand nuggets. There's nothing else to do here, Mom. <laughs> I can't believe you have my birthday party at sand nuggets. <laughs> 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 I thought you liked sand nuggets. Well, that was like two. <laughs> well, I know Tay saying that Ti blocks out Effie. I know. I said it doesn't block it out. It just makes uh, it more bulky. It's like when I, I can, I'll still be doing the Ti. It slows it down because you go, okay, I gotta tell this person they're wrong, but I, I like this guy. I don't, and I'm in a nice mood or something. And I'll be like. Well, you know, lemonade, a little bit of poo on it, gonna put a little bit of meh, and smile. There you go. And then, and it's the same TI as it was before. It's just polished up a little bit now. It. Yeah, it. It also seems that um, I just have this sort of maybe it's wrong of me, but. I say, well, the other person ought to just take what I'm saying, no matter what form it's coming in and how I'm presenting it, as something that's not attacking them. Right. Why, if I'm if I'm yelling at you while I'm conversating with you, that doesn't mean I'm like I think you're a bad person or something. Well, no, it means they think you're a bad person. <laughs> Yeah, nice. but they shouldn't. We don't have to bargain with other with each other's morals. We may have to to deal with other people with without you know. It's like I think, for example, the United States should have trade with countries that we don't share values with, even though we don't share values with them. But we absolutely must not bargain with other people's moralities because the nice thing about morality, unlike almost everything in life, is it's cut and dry. Well, no, it's not. It can simply be about preventing the other party from affirming. I don't have to convince them. See, the thing is, when you argue with somebody, you affirm or negate. You don't convince. Affirming means you win the argument and we do what you say we should do, even though I don't like it. Negating means we prevent you from doing that. I mean, it depends on the context. It's interesting that people tend to perceive going along with something because you lost the argument that you know we ought to follow what this guy concluded yeah, because the other the other that's, side's lost. That's mostly what TI does actually. Is it prevents well, it doesn't so much um, come up with with things to do as it does it prevents other people's wrongnesses from being manifest. So like you know for. Every time the Supreme Court strikes down a law, pretty much, it's using good TI, and it's preventing another legislative clusterfuck from happening. Most of the time, it doesn't have very good TI, but um, occasionally. Yeah, it's what TI does. It prevents. It's got, it's got the strictest moral metric. Okay, well, you can say, yeah, no, but, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's like, 
you you've neither affirmed nor negated anything successfully. That's why we affirm and negate rather than convince. I don't care if you're convinced. I note that you've not affirmed and negated anything successfully. I know what we're talking about. But you indicated that TI without FE doesn't prevent anything. And I indicated that it does. And you didn't respond to my counter, therefore that's the last argument on the chain. Because TI asked for a universal uh, criterion to be applied. The thing that makes it people be very who are TI heavy be very attracted to the idea that it correlates strongly with truth is that because it's a universal metric, it, it's sort of assumed that um, it must be referencing a universal truth. But in fact, the universality of the metric is in and of itself one of relative absolutism. So it's to the extent that there's truth involved in it, it's the integrity of of that disinterested approach, not anything in particular conclusion wise that it draws. Unless it were to preference all of those conclusions with this is the best conclusion, provided the data we evaluated, blah, 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 a bunch of other disclaimers, then it could be defensible. Well, I mean, you're kind of quibbling here about what FE is doing. You say, on the one hand, it's it's bad FE or maybe inadequate FE, like I'm not using enough FE so that FE blocks out TI or TI blocks out FE. Now you're saying it's it's negative FE, that it's actually just FE as a, as a harmful thing. That it's... But the thing is, angry FE... Anger isn't harmful, either. Yeah, anger is not inherently harmful, but I mean, I agree with with this person, whoever they are, a little bit here in that. Um, I do understand that the opportunities for meaningful use of anger are fewer than probably I'd like them to be. I, I note the following: like when I got angry the other weekend at this guy at work. I ended up getting the cough skull on me. It also fixed the problem. So, you know, did it make him friendly to me? No, but I don't give a fuck. And it, and it fixed the problem. He's doing a much better job now. Well, I mean, it, but look, I don't straight up shadow people in a vacuum. You seem to ignore what happens before that. There's an antecedent. The person has has done something either obviously dishonest, stubborn, or uh, unnecessarily unreasonable, not answering my questions, being avoidant, being non-responsive, any and all of which are worse than yelling at somebody. Yelling at somebody at least has the respect to di directly address them. Are we talking about that? Well, it's shifted. Well, that's Castro. Let's see that is. I mean, sometimes it's not good. Sometimes it's. I, I'm not disputing the fact that that I'm no expert in in the correct dosages and opportunity uses of angry FE. I think it is possible to be that, but I'm not. I probably never will be. I'm pretty reactive, you know. My my angry outbursts are not very much. They're not an exercise of self control, and neither are they an exercise in sort of willful decision making. So, to the extent that they're good, 
is something I argue after the fact. They're not inherently bad, though, like Mark's saying. It's not... Just because it's, it's not comfortable to somebody else doesn't mean it's bad. I think we also get impatient. Yeah, I get impatient. And so I think we like... So I have to really have to slow down even more. I don't know. Right. Or you're not you're not responding on point, and I've asked this many times now. It's a, it's a it's a patience thing as well. Well, but guess what? The other other party's motivation. Um. It depends on the kind of exchange I'm having as to how important that is. It doesn't necessarily matter to me. And it's not necessarily bad FE that it doesn't matter to me. It's it you could just as well say it's I mean, you know, it's it's the alternate prioritization scheme of the yours. I get FE enough to understand that it's important and I don't want to, I'm not somebody who goes around arbitrarily beating people up. If I do it somewhat arbitrarily, I probably feel bad about it afterwards. I try to exercise good discretion and to follow certain kinds of rules rather than trying to read people. So you're right that I'm not super aware of people's motivations, but in a way, on a larger FE level, people end up appreciating that because they know what they're going to get from me. And they know it's going to be direct. They know I'm not going to bullshit them. And they may or may not like me, or they may or may not like it when I don't. But, you know, like FE second function people, tool slot FE people, they like me because I'm easy, right? I'm easy to read, I'm easy to understand in terms of my emotions. I'm not trying to hide them, really. I'm not trying to fool anybody with displays. And, uh,. I'm also re reactive in a good way to responsive to good FE from tool function FE people. So, it's why we get along, I guess. But, nevertheless, you're not going to convince me that the world, the world would be, I, I'd be better off if I just was your way instead of my way. <laughs> no. I don't like your way that much. It's too F-E for me. Too much F-E in the mix. Too hard. Yeah, I think actually, Eric, uh, why you want to you wanna practice this kind of self-restraint is because in fact, when you believe yourself to be correct about the things that you're talking about, and, and, and let me remind you that ev almost everyone in here, fools, as you just, um, unless I misheard you, uh, has been at the brunt of this attitude. It's not all the time. I'm not having a go at you or anything. We're talking, you, know, you, you understand what we're talking about and why. Um, but, you know, like me, for instance. <laughs> Uh, when we've talked about moon landings, <laughs> and you've just straight up been wrong. Your, your your argumentation is not as solid as you believe it is, and then you and then you resort to to this, and it's always at the stage at which your argument breaks down. You see, and and everybody sees that. Okay, Castro. It's a defense mechanism. Is what it looks like. Cool. So some good FE, Eric. I'm digging it. <laughs> That's good feedback. I'll just keep it in mind. I don't know, Kestrel, I think you're making it seem like that happens frequently. If that does it happen. happens more frequently than it should. It's a fair criticism in that. I mean, ultimately, um, I, I'm not, look, there are certain time, certain circumstances where expressing an a outlying amount of outrage about something is appropriate because people aren't, aren't like, 
they're, they're asleep. That's not the situation here. That's not the situation when I'm yelling at Kestrel, certainly. Um, it, it's, in general, it's not the situation here. The situation here is sometimes people come in and are new or whatever, like, just being, you know, sometimes people just come in stupid. I don't know. I just get pissed off. I, that's the thing. It's like, I get it that it's, uh, it's an area where I can optimize more, but the thing is, though, it's it's actually a breakdown. It's not, uh, it, it, yeah. I mean, all right. It's it's a breakdown of uh, ultimately the the approach that you are trying to take. You know, what I mean, you're trying to take a, you're trying to go pure TI, and yet it's manifestly not that, and. Uh, but, you know, some people like like a fight sometimes, so it's okay. I mean, my TV actually never never wavers. It's it's the same whether I'm angry or not. Um, yeah, that's not to say that it's progressive or correct. I didn't say that. I said it's the same whether I'm angry or not. It is an area I'd like to get better in because, I mean, communication is important and being able to share ideas with people is important. Yeah. And having, like... But what are you supposed to do with somebody non-responsive? And they're just not answering your questions, they're not responding on points, they're not addressing what you're saying, they just ignore it and say their own thing. And they go, and then they say, you're not listening to me. And I go, yes, I am. And I repeat back to them exactly what they said. And I go, now, what did I say? And they go, uh, what are you what are supposed to do? <laughs> yeah, that's just called ignorance. I actually describe myself as an explorer in the further regions of human ignorance when I get into arguments. And, and, and I've learned that, you know, I'm putting, because of the FE, I'm putting so much weight on everybody needs to be right. So everybody needs to just get what I am saying, <laughs> that I get that I'm right. And that turns into anger and frustration. I used to cudgel and beat down, you know, in arguments and use, uh, you know, insults and things like that. And it's me. It's me. No, 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 but it's not because... I, I don't benefit from being an right. angry. To be fair. That's the same thing. <sighs> it's not. No, no, it is the same thing because you are exporting your values okay, into I the agree. world. It, because, I, I because agree it, with that. That it is, it is, it is frame, frame assuming. It is, it is present presenting an unstated value that it's applying things against. It, that's true. But um, that doesn't mean that my statement about wanting things to be fair and not needing to be right isn't a actual distinction to make and a real distinction. Being right is about what happens in a given conversation or a given statement. You know, but being fair means that you accept when you're wrong. Um, it's, you know, I mean, this is why they call it ignorance. And you don't get through to the part of the brain that needs to work out, needs to wake up uh, by initiating the amygdala, you know, in an, in an emotional uh, interaction. Do you know what I mean? It, it kind of shuts them down more, so that brings the end to it. That's why I'm saying these things, because it's all about, you know, convincing the other person in one way or the other. Well, you know, I'm not, like I said, I'm not a big believer in convincing because what I know I can do is affirm and negate something successfully. I don't know that a given person is going to agree that that's the metric we should use to decide our opinions, and I shouldn't expect that of anybody because they have their own metric. But what I should expect is that people go, well, you did successfully affirm or you did successfully negate that. I'm still going to... to process things my own way, but according to that metric, you're right, but that's just one metric. Fine, that's a fine response. But if you can't even, um, if you won't even engage with me at all about it in that capacity, with, with any kind of honesty, then 
I get pissed off. Well, I'm not. I'm not going to be equivocating these things because I'm not at all. But we're talking about being fair in the conversation. But then there's also the aspect that the other person isn't responding uh, properly or on point or listening to what you're saying. To some extent, at least a subset or sub question of the of the question is how could I, if I should, convince the other person that they ought to respond on point? Not that they not that they'd be convinced by the argument itself, but just that they should be honest and fair. Perhaps that's part of it. Yeah, well, I mean, even then, I would say it boils down to making better arguments. I guess the thing is, if I really wanted to convince them, I guess I'd have to be manipulative in some fashion. But to me, that seems disrespectful. Yeah. And you definitely shouldn't do it in terms of the entire argument. I mean, it's like dealing with judges in debate. That's different. It's like I tell my debaters to be... You know, sometimes you can, you can throw in a lot of politeness. Like, you can lap it on thick if you wanted to, because either it doesn't matter at all, or the judge will give you something for it. So, like, and always go for perceptual dominance. When you finish the round, look like the winning team. Just in case you get a late judge who doesn't know what the fuck they're doing, maybe they'll go for that. Who knows? Just throw, throw whatever bullshit you can on top. But you got to operate under the assumption that number one job is to win all the arguments and that judges are either right or wrong in their decision, and that we can be objective about. The debaters come back to me and they say, I think we lost that round. No, I think I didn't write an answer for this. They know. They're making the arguments, but they know when they lose. Yes. I would also think about, like, what kind of self-esteem do we get from... Um from our, you know, argumentational prowess and how much have we got invested in in seeing ourselves as, um, you know, having self-esteem based upon uh, these qualities and... Uh, and Goes for uh, the, too. And the you, you need to realize, you need to understand or at least acknowledge that I'm right and, you know, I've got these qualities could be related to, uh, to these things as, you know... Nobody wants to look stupid or feel like someone isn't recognizing their, uh, isn't validating their opinions. Well, you know, it's funny when I, I didn't really see myself as an arguer at first around here. I didn't foresee myself as somebody who was argumentative or wanted to have a bunch of debates. I just perceived myself as somebody who was talking about philosophy stuff, mostly. But then, you know, I wanted to also talk to people. I wanted to interview them first. I tried to just do an interview thing. But uh, people, it's really hard to find random people that you interview on, strangely. It would seem to me it would be so easy, but that's because I'm so extroverted. Uh, anyway, mm. eventually people started, you know, I started having the GTM rooms to try to get people to come so I could talk to them. And, you know... I found myself occasionally getting mad because people would be being intent. But it seemed to me at the time, I was like, you're being intentionally stupid. You cannot be. You you are totally fucking faking this. I, I You go back to those little videos, I'm sure you find me tons of people that. But I just didn't have very many opportunities to interact with a wide swath of people in that ideational capacity before. So it was interesting. I didn't. I didn't know being a debate coach would enter into it as much as it has, but I guess I should have anticipated it. I do. I think it's big, big part of my self-esteem. It's hard to separate the ability to ideate in a parsing or negationary way my tool function from my identity. It's sure. I mean, self-esteem. I don't really have, I think I have a lot of self-esteem issues. I might. I mean, maybe, maybe like kind of old ones. I don't know. I feel okay most of the time. It doesn't have to be an issue to manifest in that way occasionally, does it? Really? No, that's, that's true. I mean, I'm certainly not immune to the ego stuff, but. I mean, it's an area that we excel in, whereas we're not necessarily doing a lot of stuff and being successful in the normal sense of the word and we're not feely types we're not scoring a bunch of chicks and we're not 
you know, having a bunch of money and all these things, but at least we can argue with somebody. Well, I would also say we have objective self-criticism. That's an important one. That's why I get frustrated with with types that, which brings back to the topic of this video <laughs> that we're making. Slapping some sense into people. Chester, are you slapping some sense into me right now? <laughs> I think you are. I think it's all a big demo, huh? That's some pretty slick INFJ shit you just pull right there. All right, well, thanks for watching. Don't forget to do plenty of cheese.